Hey everybody! In today's video, I am going to do a technique that I have named Stencil Transfer Batik. This was actually born out of an accident at one of my classes at the Artisan Expo in Santa Fe, and I took a little note when the accident happened to come home and try to deliberately <laughs> make something pretty on my gel press using a stencil in kind of an unusual way. I'm starting with just some paint on my craft mat. Nothing exciting there. I have a turquoise Dina Wakely paint and then a few craft paints. I'll be eventually using pink and yellow. But to start to just show you the idea behind this technique, I will just be using the turquoise and the yellow. I have my 5 by 7 gel press, and I'm going to move my paper out of the way because it's in the way. And what you want to do is just load up your brayer with paint and then roll across a stencil of any design. And make sure that you do add a little bit of paint when you do the second half if you're using the 5 by 7 plate. And you're transferring a sort of batik version of the stencil over to your gel press and then you can print it. It sort of distresses the images and makes them into a batik looking background. At least that's what it looks like to me. So now that you have the basic idea, we'll do a few more of these. This is really fun with this beautiful leaf stencil. I'll link you to this stencil. It makes for a fantastic non-traditional fall background for a card, which you saw a few little peaks of. But I love the way that the pattern of the stencil becomes sort of ethereal and moves into the background so that you get just a hint of those leaves and the veins. It's a little bit harder to see here, but you'll see it in the photos. So now I'll add a little bit of pink and this one's separated. I actually haven't used real paint on my gel press in a while. I've been really enjoying the splash inks, which you can see up at the top of the screen. I got to meet the inventor of the splash inks when I was at this expo, and that was very exciting for me. She's a wonderful woman, and in my mind, a genius. So it was so wonderful to see her there and get to talk to her a little bit. So now I'll take this larger floral and look how beautifully that transfers to the gel press. That is so much fun. And then I didn't, you can see the difference sort of where I didn't add paint. I got excited and I didn't add paint. So it's a little more subtle at the bottom. But look at the gorgeous batik patterns that you can get in the background. It's a real different look than if I had just used the stencil in the normal way that you do with the gel press. So I'm happy with this experiment. The class that I was taking where I had the accident that led to this idea was actually a monotype class, which was so much fun. I had such a great instructor. All the classes at the expo were amazing, but I enjoyed that class so much. And it's similar to gel printing. It's not the same. You don't use the same process, but some of the techniques I think could cross over like this accidental technique is doing today. These stencils are wonderful. And I have a big stack of them on my desk that I've been waiting to use for this video. And I just now had the time to sit down and film. This color combination is a variation on my Holy Trinity. And I thought that both for fall and for winter cards, so I'm making this sort of into a snowflake background, 
and then the other ones into a fall background. I thought these would be bright, happy, fun, non-traditional colors for both. And you'll see the little winter scene that I end up making with this background where there's just a hint of those snowflakes. Here's what the leaf card looks like. I love those leaves in the background. They're spectacular. There are the little snowflakes with my winter scene. This more abstract one made a gorgeous background for this bold floral. And then the dots are for this more humorous card. So head over to my blog to see the rest of the projects in detail. And thanks so much for watching.